Good morning, everybody. What's going on? Jeremy from the Independence Channel. Welcome to Real Truth. This morning, before we get started on this episode, I wanted to just give a little update on my situation. I haven't been posting any material on YouTube in the last week and a half or two weeks, regardless of whether it's this channel or uh, the other channels that I have for my fitness and health investment. That's I motivate me. And that's what I do as an exercise physiologist. I'm currently in a graduate program at UMass Boston, and I seek a PhD um, in clinical exercise physiology. And I'm in my second year of two years. And then the third year would be the PhD program if I choose to do that. And so what's happened is UMass Boston uh, mandated vaccinations. And so... Knowing what we know, understanding the truth, understanding the bureaucratic connections, uh, understanding exactly what this test trial nanotechnology product actually is and where they're going with it, I refuse to take it. And so being in Massachusetts, being in Boston, which is a big propaganda bubble, they're coercing indebted students and other people people of minority status or everybody really but they're pandering to the identities of people to get vaccinated and that includes creating some kind of a uh, rewards incentive or lottery incentive to where hey your name's going to get put into this lottery if you get a vaccination and you could potentially win millions of dollars it's so sick what they're doing to get people to take a vaccination it's incredible and so they're picking on indebted college students okay and academia who's who's quite frankly um in cahoots all right they're they're they they are in they they are collaborating coordinating or colluding with the banking system to indebt students that's just how it is and phd uh professors know this and they continue to go along with it which is kind of what they're doing now what's happened is i had to fill out a religious exemption and turn it in along with my proof of sincerity of my religious beliefs and why the why I seek a religious exemption. So religion, in my view, is is a tool that we use to live in the frequency of truth or God. Truth is the light, the light of consciousness, the light of truth, God. When we are censoring information, which is what the universities are going off of, anybody who's mandating this product is going off of a limited and censored data set, purely and simply. And therefore, one cannot possibly be practicing the scientific method, and we are not living in truth. And so you are impeding on my ability to practice my religious preference, that which my or I'm sorry, to impede on the truth that which my religious preference is based, okay? And so that was my that was my argument. And I provided my documentation. The University Health Services rejected it. I had to file an appeal to a vice chancellor of student affairs during which time this person who is a lawyer from another university, okay? A lawyer rejects my appeal. For lack of sincerity and i spoke with this person uh later on in my second appeal it was kind of a secondary appeal if you will if you will where i was able to speak in person with with uh the vice chancellor uh, via zoom and i was able to spend about 15 or 20 minutes describing my awakening from the understanding the central banking system and the federal reserve and fractional reserve lending the le the financialization of our legislative bodies you start to see the world crumble all around you as you start to uncover exactly uh, what the scheme is and how it affects humans mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Okay, And you start to say to yourself, I don't accept this. I don't like this. The system's corrupt. It's not, it's, it's not the people in the system. The system could be good. It's set up the way it's supposed to be for checks and balances. But those checks and balances have been completely overturned in our Department of Justice. Uh, you've seen it in our judicial system. Uh, we've seen it in academia. Regardless of who believes what, what we do know is academia has accepted a lot of private money from people that we don't know. And they're simultaneously 
keeping a lot of information from people. It's a control of information, a censorship of data and information. And it's being holistically conducted on a daily basis, right? So I've spent the last two months basically communicating back and forth. I'm writing letters of recommendation for one of my professors. And while simultaneously my professors have distanced themselves from me, I sent a mass email to folks um, collectively um, a, a number of months ago or a number of weeks ago, and they all distanced themselves from me, including my academic advisor who claims, hey, uh, I, I don't care what you're telling me here. You have to fix your enrollment issues before you deal with me. And it's like, wait a second, I'm in this program. Aren't I a part of this? Aren't I a part of your entity here? This is, I'm here in grad school here. This is serious. I'm not here to play around. There's a censorship of information and data. You're a scientist. What do you mean this doesn't, this doesn't pertain to you? And so I send another email and I say, hey, this is the information. Here it is. It's up to you to read it. It's up to you to investigate. Otherwise, you're complicit. All right. And so these people are complicit. Um, these these people are complicit. Our PhD professors. It doesn't matter who these what is in front of their name at this point, whether they're medical doctors or whatever. We are living in a society full of naive people who lack the courage to understand the truth. It goes against what they've been programmed to believe, whether it's politically or identity wise, whatever the case, people love making money here in Massachusetts and in Boston. It's a cash cow of a city. Let me tell you, they love making their money and they love their bureaucratic control. It's a hierarchical dominance structure that does exist. And academia is one of the most corrupt institutions when it comes to um, discrimination uh, and hierarchical dominance and all of that stuff. The same liberal authorities that accuse others of doing it, they themselves and their bureaucratic entities actually um, are perpetrators of, okay? And so we had this situation on UMass Boston campus where they're not allowing you to go to school there. One of my classes was I, I was able to keep because it was online, but the other two courses I am being excluded from. I'm not allowed to come onto campus, which means I can't communicate with my my peers or those or those above me. They allow people to go on campus to protest for communism and to promote communism. Everybody has a right to do whatever they want, and I would love to have that conversation one day. Running into a Marxist or a communist is always fun. I do on a daily basis here, okay? I do on a daily basis here. I'm not exaggerating. They are excluding people from campus. A free state school. It's supposed to be free. Like freedom of speech. You're free to go on with information at UMass. And then smart people can come to a consensus as to what the truth might be, to be as accurate as possible, to be able to repeat it, to get the same number, repeatability, accuracy. These things create a validity of our reality, right? And so they're not doing that. They're denying that. They're denying truth. They're censoring information at UMass Boston. I can't go to that university. Um, and I've been fighting that fight. So that's where I've been for the last couple of months. It's been very difficult to post, um, especially the last uh, couple of weeks. It's been very difficult to post stuff. So that's what I've been up to. And that's where I've been. And um, so I am officially out of UMass Boston as of September 10th when school starts. Today is the 7th. Um, I am finished. I won't be attending that university anymore. And so my aspirations of getting my master's degree, doing clinical work, um, is put on hold for now. But when you live in the light of consciousness, 
when you live in the light of truth, you live on God's time and you live in the frequency of, of God's time, basically, of your own time. And so your goals, you keep that vision. There are always unforeseen chasms and they're, they're in labyrinths that, that one must encounter along the way in order to reach your goals, right? And so that's that's where I'm at right now. And I thought that I'd share that with everybody because it's something that's that's weighed on me heavily and to say that I'm not stressed out about it, um, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be telling the truth. But I feel comfortable with what's going on in terms of where I go from here. I have a plan. Um, I'm going to go home. Having been a veteran, uh, nine years Marine Corps service, um, deployments to Iraq, 2005, 6, 7, uh, deployments to Afghanistan, uh, 2011 through uh, early 12, being a combat veteran in that way, um, I've been away from home for 17 years. I left in 2004 to join the military and afterwards I moved to Boston. I'm from Ohio um, originally, that's where my family's from. I was born in Norfolk, Virginia, raised in Newport News until I was nine, moved to Ohio and that's where I stayed until military service. I went to high school, did some college there, played some football, baseball, basketball, did that whole thing, corn fed, Midwest Ohio kid, right? But um, it's gonna be a good opportunity for me to go home for the holidays. Uh, refit, consolidate. Remember, I talk in my fitness and health investment initiative, which which is me investing my compensation from being considered a wounded veteran from my service. Seeing the world in which we live in, I then realize that, hey man, we have to get moving. Let's create a website. Let's get some information out there to people who don't have access to it and can't afford it. And we'll use that information to convey to people to, for free, right? And so, And also, I invest my time in helping other people. That was something I knew that had to be done because I had my health, which is my wealth. All right, I have what I need. Other people don't. Let's get people what they need. That's one of the things that I saw coming to light and seeing the truth and what we want to do. And I understand that we can stay on that path, but it's going to take time to consolidate. We don't want to lose value. We want to consolidate, right? Consolidate your emotions and feelings and your purpose. Remember what got you to where you're at and where you're going. Do not forget those things. And then take the next step forward. What do you do next? And so that's what I've been doing and that's what I want to do. I want to consolidate, look up uh, and investigate, research some schools that are going to be a possibility for me, and then take action. Regardless of where we go in society, regardless of where we go in this world, we have to have a plan of attack. We have to set ourselves up for success. Getting out of bed early every day and doing the things that you say you're going to do. Do it. Do it. Do it. Simple things. The things in life that you want to do, you have to start doing. And it means writing a few things down, identifying the simple things that are going to be hard to do. Simple yet hard to just go and do. And just do it. Right? Right? And so we start living in that truth and that reality. So that's where I'm at with that. Anyway, what I wanted to do was just go over um, Yahoo News. I compare my Yahoo News on my desktop to that on my 5G device here in my hand. And I always find that the information that Yahoo presents on the, the handheld version is always way more in your face like boom vaccine 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 department of justice unvaccinated suck blah 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 it's like it bombards you but if i go on my desktop it's not so bad um so what i want to do is do a screen recording here and we'll go ahead and um get started with that and i just wanted to go over a few of the headlines uh just to get going for the day and uh, to get something posted for my independence channelers here. So uh, the very first headline, COVID shots aren't the only vaccines you need. So they don't just push vaccine shots. They're pushing holistic products, all right? Everything that you don't just need a vaccine. Firstly, you don't need any vaccine. 
and it turns out that 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 our vaccines in some instances in the past were tainted with retrovirus for example the polio vaccination back in the 50s and 60s was tainted with an srv40 retrovirus that it turns out injects itself into your dna uh, your parents uh, go do their hibbity dibbity you get born and this retrovirus is fitted in your genome all right and then these retroviruses because of the toxicity of our environment all right the the what, what we would call the carcinogenic effects then lead to our cells expressing these genes okay and this is where you get cancerous cells whatever the case may be this is where we get our chronic ailments and diseases from in many instances and so this is very important to understand this is a very important concept especially when it's been brought to light in the last 18 months or two years whatever with COVID-19 and so my thing is this these COVID shots aren't the only vaccines you need how about instead we reevaluate here we've been taking vaccinations and they claim to have helped everybody yet we're sicker than we've ever been medical costs are more expensive than they've ever been the money that was printed for covid a year and a half ago was supposed to go to covid related stuff the majority of it did not go to that yet we paid for the vaccination we paid for it paid for it out of our taxpayer pockets do we want to continue the shots do we want to continue taking in their garbage or garbage it's a fancy way of saying garbage right garbage or or do we want to change the people in the system hold those responsible for corruption in the system hold them responsible expose the system for what it is it's not working we're sicker than we've ever been we're living longer but we're sicker these people are profiting massively they are extracting wealth from people and we want to allow that to happen that's what I say instead of continuing to take things into the body that's harmful and cytotoxic perhaps we should consider the environment in which we live and become familiar with it this is what I like to call uh, learning about the socio-economic and demographic environment in which we live that's what I like to do and so if we can do this and understand the bureaucratic connections and the way that people are, are profiting from these things then perhaps we can come to a better understanding uh, about what world we're living in right now and that goes with abortions too we talk about abortions um, this is a good one Iskra Lawrence says she was nearly nine weeks along when she learned of unplanned pregnancy okay and if you look at this interview she talks about um, the, the right to have an abortion so on and so forth I'm not necessarily here to argue about right or wrong here but we need to be made aware of the the, the dark markets that exist in the abortion industry there is an abortion industry okay and we'd like to know who has profited from from fetuses what scientific advantages have come from fetuses how many are occurring in in different demographics the black community for example i would be really interested in knowing i think other people should be made aware of that why is it that fetuses can be born alive and sold this is what i understand why is it that there is a market for this it's a dark market that's not talked about planned parenthood got caught and they are still supported by a wide ranging number of people who have bureaucratic control or influence in our society tell me how that is we have to know these things we deserve to know and 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 include every bit of information and data into the public discussion and discourse it has to happen and yet it doesn't people just see the news and because it panders to their emotions and their identities 
people feel like people that that certain identities are losing rights. You put a misogynist in the White House. Oh, women's rights going right down the tube. Yeah, except for the fact that we've got we've got thousands and thousands and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of women um, that are on dating apps and they're they're pulling the same stuff that they're accusing misogynist men of doing. All right. The same scumbaggery both men and women are doing to one another right now. Go check out the dating pool on these websites on, on dating platforms. It's disgusting. The, the emotional and mental trauma and abuse from narcissistic behavior of people um, just um, dating and discarding one another. Uh, stealing a little bit of your emotional well-being every time. It, that, that doesn't sit well with me. And so we need to know these things. I think it's very important not to go off on too much of a tangent. I know I do often. But uh, let's go to another headline here. We will not tolerate violence. The Department of Justice to help abortion seekers. The Department of Justice will not tolerate violence. Yet the Department of Justice will, uh, in its corrupt nature, it is corrupt, 100% corrupt when you have judges prosecuting attorneys and defending attorneys colluding with one another to ensure the demise and the bankruptcy of anybody who is a dissident who whistleblows against the establishment this has been occurring folks the department of justice the fbi the nsa and the cia can control our perception of reality by creating false plots arresting people who they incriminate or that they entrap with bribery and money claiming they're doing something like kidnapping Gretchen Whitmer. It, what was it? 12 or 13 of the 14 people arrested were FBI informants. Yet the media who coordinates with the Department of Justice and all of those entities then gets the information and they promote the narrative, whatever the narrative is, to brainwash Americans into believing that alt-right alt-right-wing Nazi conspiracy white supremacist theorists who supported Trump tried to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer when it turns out that the FBI was doing it themselves the entire time. And then the media was used to create a uh, false perception of reality about that case. You don't hear them reporting about it now. That should be a huge story and it's not, right? And so the DOJ, and this, this goes for riots, you had a lot of people that were peacefully protesting in different places, whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's uh, people at Capitol Hill on January 6th. It doesn't matter. What happens is you end up with people attached to the FBI or whoever else, and they create um, these acts of violence in many cases. And this has been proven, folks. It's been proven, and it's been censored. And so violence is created and perpetuated on corporate TV and it inflames your senses. It's like you're watching a movie. Why? Because it is. All right, so the DOJ to help abortion seekers. The DOJ. They have their heads so far up their behinds. Whatever happened to Russiagate, by the way? I read the Mueller report twice. It's sick. It's disgusting. What those people did is treasonous they know it too and they know it and this is why we get these types of headlines that are very misleading and deceiving Jeez, yahoo all right that was aaron andrews aaron andrews was let's see nfl reporter reveals her biggest work related fears that that's aaron andrews remember she was on the she was conducting business for espn and she was in a hotel room and somebody was drilling holes in her wall and video recording her butt naked standing in front of the mirror. Um, and uh, the guy was eventually caught and sentenced. But anyway, Aaron Andrews uh, talking about her ordeal here. Um, World Trade Center surfer struggles to comprehend a survival 20 years later. The World Trade Center surfer, the guy who fell from the top and somehow managed to ride the rubble to the ground and survive somehow. Pretty good stuff. The latest COVID-19 surge is just the start of a new nightmare. All right, just the start of another nightmare. 
Dr. Fauci says it's likely only Pfizer vaccine will be used at outset of booster campaign. Matt Lauer not doing well after today firing. Why do they put that guy at all on the news is beyond me. That guy, actually, here's why they do it. Matt Lauer is a predator. This is esoteric. They have to keep that guy in the news somehow because he he stokes an emotional response in people who understand the scumbaggery of that person. Okay? So even though Matt Lauer got caught doing what he did, they're still going to have him on. Why? Because he taints our reality. He creates demons in our reality. Those demons are triggered emotionally. It's esoteric. And so he has to maintain or be maintained in the public light in some sense regardless. That perpetuates more of the same demons to be brought forth. That's what that's about. That's why Matt Lauer stays in the news like that. After what he did, they should never be reporting on that guy again. Brian Williams, Stolen Valor, he went back to MSNBC to report propaganda. Even after he got caught with Stolen Valor. Why? Because his corruption is seeded. It's like it's like what it's like um, you've been injected with some bad stuff. Some really bad stuff and it festers within. It has to continue to be allowed to exist in order to maintain the integrity of the corruption. The integrity of the corruption. Is there any integrity? I guess the integrity of corruption would be its consistency. So hey, you got to keep being corrupt. That, that, that maintains your, the integrity of your corruption. Yeah, I suppose that would make sense. Right? So in any case... They have to maintain these are deep seated uh, irrationalities that have to be allowed to exist in our perception of reality. And so when we scroll through here, we do get an unconscious connection. And that's what that's used for. Coronavirus latest news clinicians will be reluctant to give children jabs without parental consent, warns expert. Well, my question is, when is a clinician communicating with a child without their parent present? I want to know that. I didn't know that you could give a jab without parental consent to begin with. It's kind of crazy. So anyway, uh, clinicians will be reluctant to give children jabs without parental consent. An expert has warned amid suggestions teenagers will be able to sign off their own inoculations. Boy, they're targeting teenagers. We have adults who don't even understand what's going on. And our poor children. I I do what I do for our future. I don't think enough about our children. I think about them all the time, but I don't think about them enough, I feel like. Um, This is really, this movement is about protecting our kids. They're coming for these, for our kids. That's pretty, that's pretty sick. And I'm actually going to leave it with that. That is really sick. This is the world we live in. So we have colleges that ignore scientific data. Um... We have bureaucrats put into position to judge other people's religious exemption sincerity. And we have massive propaganda campaigns um, stemming from the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, um, the CDC, the FDA. I mean, the FDA recalls uh, PCR tests that were used to determine who was infected and who wasn't back in June. It was a massive recall. And no agencies reported it. Fox News reported it briefly, and then it went away. But we are living in this world, folks. We're living in this reality, and it's important that uh, we recognize it. I'm glad I could come on and make this video this morning. It's been a while. I'd like to be more consistent myself, maybe build a little of my own integrity with this, with this, um, this product that's my channel. Um, but in the meantime, uh, stay safe out there, everybody. Stay vigilant. Stay motivated, get your exercise, stay 
vibrant, stay vascular, right? And stay independent. Until next time, everybody. God bless.